All right. Uh, to be quite frank, I don't even know why I'm making this video. This just feels like a weird time in um, in the year where it's like no one actually plays Week 18 fantasy football. Like some people in previous years probably played Week 17 when that was the last year of the regular season, but I feel like they learned their lesson. And then when the NFL extended it, like no one actually made their championship into Week 18. So I'm kind of just yelling into the void and talking into the ether. So just, you know, let me do my thing. This is how I like to express myself. So we're going to talk about the waiver wire this week, but there are like 8 million moving parts. So I have a feeling I'm going to continuously sound like an idiot throughout because there are teams that have clinched playoffs, teams that have not clinched playoffs, teams that are playing for nothing, teams that, teams that are playing for everything. Thing. So there are some teams where they might rest their starters, but we don't know that right now. There are some teams that have like, you know, like the Chargers and like the Titans and the Jaguars play. Ah, shit is all over the place. So I'm going to talk about the atrocity that is the waiver wire this week. There are some popular players on it. Most of them are probably owned. The ones that aren't owned are almost like not worth putting into your lineup. I'm going to link an article uh, by C uh, by CBS that has all of these scenarios for clinching playoffs for you. It is literally titled 2023 NFL Playoffs Week 18 Clinching Scenarios for AFC and NFC Contenders. This time of the year gets just so overly confusing about who needs to win, seven other teams need to lose, this guy needs to uh, fucking order Uber Eats instead of DoorDash, and then they'll get into the playoffs. Things are out of control. Also, the other thing, obviously on everyone's mind, DeMar Hamlin last night in the Bills Cincinnati game game obviously prayers up to him hope he's okay he's in critical condition as of right now filming this on tuesday around noon eastern time as it relates to fantasy football the only thing you could do right now is just kind of sit on the information i imagine what the nfl is going to do similar to covid is get the game played as soon as they possibly can they're probably waiting on the news of what's going on with him hopefully optimistically we hear that he is okay he remains in critical condition but he'll get through it and then they will schedule the game as soon as possible if i had to guess i would say the game is played on wednesday night there is no thursday night football this week in week 18 so they do have a little bit more of an open schedule in order to get things going but of course the later into the week that these two teams play the less rest they have in between when they play this week and then sunday monday whatever these uh, the Bengals and bills actually play in week 18 and their playoff team so they will obviously have things that they're still playing for on the line even if they've clinched spots etc cetera, etc cetera. so just like everybody else you're kind of just you know waiting on your toes you're not sure what to do no fantasy league can be done after last night's game we just have to wait for that situation to play itself out let's talk about the waiver wire though as always my rankings are available on bdge.co you can become a big dog member we're going to be doing a lot of cool things with the membership this offseason as it relates to dynasty and rookie content that will be a lot of the offseason uh incoming Okay, and we're going to be doing an entire playoff series, an entire YouTube video playoff preview series uh, with me, Animal, and Tony talking about every single game throughout the playoffs. So make sure that you do subscribe and stick around because if your team's in the playoffs. We'll probably uh, reverse jinx the shit out of them. First player up on this list is Kadarius Tony. Finally got back on the field for the Chiefs, looked good, played great, had production, had targets, had snaps, had everything that you need for Kadarius Tony to actually produce. When he's on the field, he produces. They play against Las Vegas next week. He seems like he is is one of the top targets on the Chiefs again hopefully he doesn't get hurt throughout this week that's uh definitely not off the board of possibilities right now but Kadarius Tony is pretty much my favorite pickup this week if he is unowned like Traylon Burks Zach Moss are the number two and three they're probably owned in this situation Traylon Burks came back I think he went like four for 66. Josh Dobbs is going to be the quarterback there in Tennessee. Huge game for Tennessee and Jacksonville. Obviously, the winner of that gets into the playoffs, so they're going to be playing for everything on the line. That's when dudes like Traylon Burks show up. All right. Might be owned. Might not be. I don't know. Zach Moss is getting a ton of carries playing against Dallas, which is obviously a very tough defense. Dallas is playing for a lot on the line, so they're not resting any starters here. Uh, Zach Moss is kind of like an uninspiring low end RB2, high end RB3, who will probably get you eight to nine points in your lineup. Damian Harris finally made his return, got into the end zone, had double digit touches. They play at Buffalo, so that's a tough game. Uh, the Patriots, I believe, are still in contention, but they need like 72 things to happen in order to get in. So Harris. Looks like he'll be playing. Looks like he'll be part of the rotation. Looks like a guy who will get some goal line work, so I think you could do worse than him. Josh Kelly is an interesting one here because the Chargers are in the playoffs. Now, I'm not actually sure. Someone's going to have to fact check me on this, but I thought I heard something in a podcast this morning that their seating cannot actually move up or down, and I might just be lying to your face right now. But if that's the case, 
they might have incentive to sit a dude like Austin Eckler. And if, and if he does sit, Josh Kelly has been the next guy up in the lineup for the Chargers. So, you know, we might hear the news later on in the week, but if you want to get ahead and you have an extra luxury roster spot, he might be a dude that you want to pick up now. Jahan Dotson's been playing pretty well, goes against Dallas. Um, the entire receiving core there is kind of just up and down. Rashid Shahid, Saints Saints found a gem here, man. Real legit downfield field stretcher for the Saints. I'm excited to see him play a role next year in this offense. They found a guy who I believe he was an undrafted player, um, but an absolute separator down the field, almost like poor man's Christian Watson. Almost, I don't even want to say poor man's because he's this dude's produced. He doesn't have the touchdowns, but anytime Rodgers throws the ball down the field to Watson, uh, Watson is open. He's always like three three feet, three yards in front of the defender. It doesn't always connect because Rodgers either overthrows him or Watson drops the ball, but she, you get a lot of the same energy from Shahid where it's like every single time the ball is thrown downfield to this dude he's open you just got to put it on the money so if he's available in the dynasty league I would absolutely pick him up Chuba Hubbard's been getting a lot of run James Cook we'll have to see obviously what happens with the remainder of the Bills game but he was getting some run in the Bills game early so he's a dude who could have a big game against the Patriots next week that's like literally all we have on the waiver wire this week Hunter Henry Tyler Conklin Chiggy Albert O made an appearance because uh, Greg Dolchich was out I'm not sure what his injury status actually is here Greg Dolchich Dolchich, hamstring, done. Uh, oh, he's on the IR. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, so Greg Dolchich is on the season-ending IR, which means Albert O is now back in as the starting tight end for Denver, and he actually produced last game, so hopefully we continue to see that going forward. Not putting a lot of high hopes onto him. I'll probably have him as like a top 15 guy, but nothing crazy if you need to stream. Let's take a look at some defensive streamers, as I've been yelling about for like four straight weeks. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars have been absolutely electric. Uh, I started them in a championship game last week. They, they helped me secure a dub. I talked about it in many videos last week, so hopefully you guys picked them up, but they've had like 12 to 14 last week, I think 17 fantasy points in almost a month straight, like four to five straight weeks. They've had at least 12 fantasy points. They're minus six and a half points. They're six and a half points favorites at home against Tennessee Titans. Absolutely love them as a streaming defense. Uh, I don't hate the Saints. They're at home three and a half point favorites against the Carolina Panthers. Seattle at home six and a half point favorites against the Rams. And that's probably the only streamers that are widely available that I actually like. But for rule of thumb, you want to you want to pick up a, a defense that is projected to win the game, number one. You want a team that's going to win the game. Two, the bigger the spread of the game, the, the more they're favored, obviously, the better that they are. If it's a lower over-under, that's fine. The higher the over-under gets, right, if the teams are expected to score like 55 points, the bigger the spread better be if you want to grab them. Like, Green Bay Packers are favored by four and a half points at home. That's the other thing. You want to play at home as well. It's a huge uh, advantage as it comes to streaming defenses at home against Detroit, but Detroit probably puts up a lot of points. So the over-under is at 49 and a half. High over under, small spread. That means Detroit is expected to score a lot of points, obviously. So Green Bay, while they're at home and they're favored by four and a half, not exactly a defense that I'm like really excited to get into my lineup. So they're probably like number five or six on the list, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, we're just going to keep it short and sweet for this week because that's the opposite of what the waiver wire is. It's not short. It's not sweet. It's not good. It's not nothing, but it's week 18. So let's finish the season strong. Hopefully this is helpful for y'all. We will have a playoff preview video going out Friday and then we will We'll be previewing every single playoff game in the following weeks coming, going forward, etc. Uh, let me know what type of content y'all want to see in the coming weeks throughout the playoffs, as well as uh, into rookie dynasty season. We'll be around, though. Don't you worry. We will be here. I'll be here forever the rest of my life. So make sure you subscribe. I love you. <laughs>